Hi everyone, uh, thanks for coming today uh, to the Human Computer Interaction Research Group talk uh, for October. Um, today we have Yosef Ola Taibi, um, who will be presenting haptics designing and evaluating electrotactile cues, electrotectons. Um, Yosef is uh, from the University of Glasgow, and thank you very much for being here. Um, I'm going to let you take it away. All right. Uh, thank you very much for introducing me and also for the invitation to talk about my work that I did uh, throughout my PhD. So, um, so again, my name is Youssef. I'm a, a fourth year PhD student in the uh, Glasgow Interactive System section at the University of Glasgow and uh, presenting my work on uh, tactons, which basically is a, a electrotactile uh, cues. So uh, first, I wanted to talk about the meaning of the word haptics, as it sometimes get confused with the word uh, tactile. So based on the uh, IOS standard, uh, haptics uh, interaction involves uh, sensing and uh, movement of skin tendons, muscles and joints, and it has two categories. So the first one is uh, tactile, which is uh, stimulating the cutaneous system through the deformation of the skin using vibration, pressure, heat, or electrical uh, current. And the second category is force feedback, which is basically stimulating the kinesthetic uh, system, uh, applying uh, uh, forces that are opposite of the movement of the limbs and the joints. So here's a figure showing all the components of, of haptics that we talked about. And if you can see here is uh, electrical stimulation, which is the area of my research. And it's part of the uh, tactile system, hence uh, electrotactile uh, feedback. Um, so, tactile feedback is a, a common modality used for uh, interaction in many different devices, from uh, mobile phones to cars. Uh, through the sense of touch, uh, rich information can be delivered to the skin, um, as you can see here in the pictures. Uh, some examples, like uh, that we did with that we did in our group, uh, including uh, ultrasonic. Um, Tactile uh, thermium feedback uh, done by Paddy, which is here in, 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 in the talk, and also verbotactile. Uh, they can only generate a, a certain range of uh, tactile experiences, and it's important to improve or implement uh, a good feedback for these interactions through which information can be delivered. So in my work, I investigated the novel alternative tactile technology called uh, electrotactons feedback that uses a small uh, flow of, of electrical current uh, between uh, two um, between two uh, electrodes, as you can see here in the picture, to stimulate the mechanoreceptors in the skin directly, uh, giving a tactile sensation. So the mechanism to deliver the current to the skin requires having two uh, uh, electrodes, uh, an anode and a cathode. And uh, when applying a higher amount of current, that goes into the skin, uh, it goes, it travels deeper into the tissue to the uh, muscles, actuating the muscles, which is a different research area called electrical muscle stimulation. So in my area, I only focus on stimulating uh, these mechanoreceptors, which is the sense of touch, without uh, activating any muscles. And uh, the actuators or the electrodes of, of electrotactile displays, as you can see here in the pictures, uh, can be used in applications that mechanical actuators cannot be used in, uh, that requires it to be thin, small, flexible, uh, light, uh, highly energy efficient, uh, with no mechanical resonance, and also highly responsive, giving it an advantage over uh, verbal tactile displays. And uh, here are some uh, uh, uses of electrotactile feedback in virtual reality. Uh, as you can see here, uh, a, a player can play uh, a, a VR boxing game and the electrodes and their arm can give them a feedback about their opponent like hitting them. The same thing can be applied for like uh, football or baseball. And it also can be applied to any tangible surfaces like in a car. Uh, so you can apply it for the steering wheel to convey a navigation cues or on the central console to give a feedback to the driver when they change the radio station or maybe changing the settings of the uh, AC. 
So controlling the electrical flow and the shape of the signals achieved by manipulating parameters uh, such as uh, pulse width and amplitude and pulse frequencies, which is the number of pulses per second, and the intensity of that current uh, is governed by the amount of pulse width and amplitude, which can evoke uh, different sensations. So in my research, I investigate the subjective perception of electrotactile feedback or, uh, to create effective cue, uh, tactile cues uh, on the palm of the hand, uh, focusing on the functional aspects of alertness by measuring urgency and annoyance and emotions by measuring valence and arousal. In the meantime, designing and evaluating structured and abstract electrotactile cues called electrotactons. And in my, th in my PhD, I have like three questions uh, to answer, uh, which are uh, what parameters of electrotactile feedback or stimulation can be used to influence subjective perception? Uh, what, uh, how can parameters of electrotactile uh, feedback be designed to encode information in electrotactons? And then lastly, what levels of performance can be achieved when these parameters are combined uh, to create electrotactons uh, to present multidimensional information? So to answer these questions, uh, I designed and conducted six experiments. Um, in the first two, I investigated, investigated the first pair of the electrotactile parameters and measured their uh, influence on subjective perception and how many level of clear sensations that they can produce. And then after that, using these levels of sensations uh, uh, in experiment three to create uh, three-dimensional electrotectons and measure their performance by uh, measuring their recognition rate. And then in experiment four, I combined uh, uh, pulse width and amplitude into one parameter called intensity and investigate its influence on perce uh, subjective perception. And then in experiment five, I measured how many distinguishable, uh, distinguishable levels uh, participants can perceive of intensity in terms of which uh, parameter is more intense and also uh, pulse frequency in, in, in terms of which param uh, sorry, which cue felt uh, uh, more uh, rougher. And then once I, I, I have all the levels of perception, I would uh, design the next iteration of electrotectons in the last experiment. So, all my experiments uh, had the same setup where a participant would be seated in the front of the screen, having the electrodes being placed on the non-dominant hand, and they will interact with the interface of the experiment with their dominant hand. And uh, my experiments had uh, three phases. Uh, so the first phase is the calibration phase, which is essential for uh, uh, electrotactile feedback. Um, as each person has a different skin impedance and uh, basically impedance is the resistance of the skin towards the electrical current. So what might be a strong stimulation for me might be weak for you. And also the condition of the skin uh, varies between uh, people and also between time to time. If you have a, a wet skin, the impedance will be lower, requiring less current. And if it's dry, higher resistance require higher uh, current. And here is the interface that I use to uh, calibrate the detection and discomfort thresholds of the of the uh, electrotactile feedback. And then the training phase would allow participants to uh, uh, experience the stimuli before the actual experiment. And then the experiment phase where uh, data were, will be gathered. So in my first experiment, I uh, manipulated uh, three levels of pulse width uh, mid uh, high, mid, and low, based on the detection and the uh, discomfort thresholds, and six levels of pulse frequencies. And then once I present them uh, to the participant, I will measure the perceived urgency, annoyance, valence, and arousal. And this is the interface that they uh, dealt with during the experiment. So once I present the cue on their palm, they would answer uh, uh, what, how urgent was the stimulus, how annoying was the stimulus, how pleasant, indicating valence, was the stimulus, and how exciting, indicating uh, 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 arousal, was the stimulus. So the answer was, the, 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 the metric I used is a Likert scale of seven points. So once I gathered the data, I performed a, a statistical test uh, 
uh, and it showed that both pulse width and pulse frequencies had a significant effect on perceived sensation, except for pulse frequencies uh, on valence, which had no significant effect. And after that, I performed a post doc 2 key test uh, to see how many clear levels of sensations, and I found uh, three uh, clear levels of urgency, uh, three levels of uh, annoyance, three levels of arousal, and only two levels of valence. And when I performed the same Tuki test on the uh, effect of pulse frequencies, uh, found only two levels, uh, clear levels of urgency uh, and arousal, and only three for annoyance. And I realized that um, frequencies, 30 pulses per second and beyond that, they were perceived the same, so there was no significant difference between them. So in the next experiment, experiment two, I would... Um, test like a narrower range, but with many uh, points. So here's the experiment two where I manipulated uh, amplitude. And uh, so three levels, high, middle, low, based on the detection and discomfort thresholds. N this time, nine levels of pulse frequencies to figure out how many clear levels there are. And I also measured the same thing, which are the perceived urgency, annoyance, basal, and arousal use the same interface as experiment one uh, to interact with the users. And after performing the statistical test, both pulse width and, and, and pulse uh, amplitude and pulse frequency had a significant effect on all perceived sensations, as you see in, in the table. Um, and then performed the postdoc two key test to see how many uh, clear levels of sensations there are. And turns out to be three levels of urgency, three levels of uh, annoyance, three levels of arousal and valence. So the higher the level of uh, amplitude, the higher the rating of sensation, except for valence, which is the opposite direction. And then did the post doc test on the uh, effect of pulse frequencies. And here uh, we had more clear levels compared to experiment one, where I had five levels of urgency, annoyance and arousal, and only three pairs of pulse frequencies. Uh, uh, for valence. And then in experiment three, the aim was to create a three-dimensional electrotactons using the level, the clear levels of sensations from the uh, from uh, the previous two experiments. And the information mapped to the levels uh, of the parameters were about the importance, type, and time until the appointment. And as you can see here, each had three levels. Um, so, but before conducting the experiment, I, I, I did a pilot test to see if participants could detect the information I wanted to present it, uh, that I wanted to present. So after performing the pilot test, it uh, turns out that uh, participants had a struggle or, or they informed me that uh, the middle level of both pulse width and amplitude were very hard to distinguish between it and the low levels. So I removed the middle level, as you can see here, to remove any confusion for the for the design of the electro uh, electrotactons. And also the the level of the pulse frequencies. Uh, so if you can see the, the original design, I had five pulses per second, 15 and 30. Uh, they informed me that they faced hard time distinguishing between them. So I reduced them to two, eight and 16. And during the pilot seems to be working. So I, when I did the experiment, I designed it and presented it to the participants. Uh, so the first stage would be the training, which is uh, different than the previous two uh, experiments. So this interface would allow the participants to learn the mapping between the electrotactons and their meaning before the actual experiment. So I gave them their time to click all these put, uh, buttons and learn the mapping. And once they're comfortable, they can move on to the uh, actual experiment where I would present the uh, electrotacton to their palm and then present this interface to them to answer what kind of information that was included within the tacton. So, uh, sorry, electrotacton. So uh, once I'm done with the experiment and then doing the analysis, uh, the overall recognition rate was 38.19%, which is not that high. And for the individual individual parameters, pulse width had 71.67%, and 60, uh, amplitude 70.28%, and pulse frequency 66.36%. 
So uh, when I looked at, or here is the uh, heat, uh, the heat map confusion matrix for the recognition rate for all the cues. So on the on the right over here are the cues presented, and here are the cues uh, uh, predicted by the participants. So as you can see here at the top, the higher levels of pulse width and amplitude uh, uh, that encoded the importance and the type uh, scored the highest in terms of like the individual uh, cues. And here in the middle, uh, it was a, a bit of like their recognition rate wasn't as high. And when I did the interview for the, to the, with the participants after the experiment, they informed me they faced a hard time distinguishing between uh, meeting low and uh, tutorial high, and the meantime distinguishing between tutorial high and meeting low over here. So as you can see here, like the diagonal represent the correct uh, guesses. And if you see the the here uh, over here, like you can see that participants confused as they mentioned meeting low with tutorial high over here. And the same thing they confused tutorial high with, uh, sorry, confused tutorial high with uh, meeting low. So uh, also they indicated that uh, they had a very hard time uh, distinguishing between the queue containing the information 15 minutes until the appointment with the 30 minutes and five minutes, as you can see here, every time you see any queue containing 15 minutes, it performs uh, performs the worst comparing with the other two. So to improve the design of the electrotactons, uh, uh, combining pulse width and amplitude into one parameter called uh, called uh, intensity might be a good uh, maybe a good way to make the electrotactons more efficient. Um, and also regarding the pulse frequencies. Uh, in, in, a, in an absolute identification scenario, maybe using a wider range of frequencies would be also be a better idea. So in experiment four, I wanted to go back and, and evaluate the combination of amplitude and, and a pulse frequency, a pulse width in terms of like their effect, uh, effect on subjective perception. So I combined the three levels of pulse width and amplitude yielding nine different levels of intensity. And the naming scheme here, I used it as follows, like the first letter indicates pulse width and the second letter indicates um, amplitude. So I present these nine levels to the participants and then I measured the same uh, thing as before, perceived urgency, annoyance, valence, and arousal. Used the same interface as the first two experiments. And then when I did the statistical test, intensity had a significant effect on all perceived sensations. And when I performed the uh, postdoc Tuki test, uh, turns out that uh, it had five clear levels of urgency, uh, three for annoyance, two for valence, and three for arousal. And moving to experiment five, where I wanted to see how many distinguishable levels using a different method this time uh, called a forced choice method. So I would present um, in, in, in the first part, which focuses on the distinguishability of nine different nine levels of intensity, the same uh, levels of intensity from experiment four, and presenting two cues of different intensities and ask participant which cue felt uh, more intense. And then the second part, uh, investigating the distinguishability of six levels of pulse frequencies from experiment one in terms of presenting two different uh, cues of different uh, uh, pulse frequencies and ask them which one was rougher. And the aim here is to see how many useful levels that it can be used for the improved design of, of electrodactyls. So in the first part, as I mentioned, presenting two cues with two different level of intensities and they would pick which one was more intense. And then the second part, two different cues of two, two different pulse, with, uh, pulse frequencies and they would answer, sorry, they would answer which one was uh, rougher. So after gathering the data and performing the statistical test for intensity, it had a significant effect on perception and it had four uniquely distinguishable levels of intensities. And when I performed the statistical test on uh, 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 pulse frequencies, 
uh, it had an effect on perception but this time only the, there's like only one like one pair having two levels which is 10 pulses per second and 90 so these two were the only two frequencies that had a significant difference between them so I you in the experiment six I use these uh, results I use the results from experiment five to design the now the two dimensional electrotactons uh, similar to experiment three, the information mapped was about the importance and the type of the appointment. And as you can see here, the intensity is mapped to the importance having three levels and frequency uh, uh, presenting the uh, the type of the appointment with 90 pulses per second, 10 pulses per second. And the two pulses per second was salvaged from experiment three as I needed three levels for this experiment. and the two pulses per second performed like roughly uh, relatively good in, uh, in, in experiment three. And also in addition, I wanted to see in this experiment, I wanted to see if the uh, electrodes, uh, uh, the size of the electrodes would impact or would affect the recognition rate of, of electrotactons. And also uh, uh, experimenting with body location to see if body location had uh, the, uh, an effect on, on the recognition rate. And uh, I picked breast and, and upper arm, and these locations were picked so it wouldn't cause any muscle uh, uh, activation. Uh, it took me some time to figure out these locations and a lot of like pilot testing. And uh, so, yeah. Um, this is the uh, training interface that I provided to the uh, participants so they can learn the mapping between the electrotactons and uh, their meaning. And once they feel comfortable uh, uh, recognizing the meaning of the electrotactons, I proceed with the experiment where I present the electrotacton and they would answer uh, these two questions about the information that was contained within the electrotacton. And after do the, doing the uh, uh, gathering the data and do the uh, statistical test, it turns out that the overall recognition rate was 65.31%, which is 20% improvement uh, over experiment three. But put in mind, we used a, a lower dimension of, 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 of information being delivered. And for the uh, individual parameters, intensity had 68.68%, uh, pulse width, uh, sorry, pulse frequency 64.41%. And uh, looking at the heat map confusion matrix, uh, at the top here, the top three cues that contains uh, 90 uh, pulses per second per, per, uh, perform the best. And when you're looking on here, the square in the middle, um, you can see that participants confused uh, lecture high with lecture medium. And also right beneath it, lecture medium was confused with the lecture low. Same thing can be said here at the last box where participant confused uh, tutorial high with tutorial medium and tutorial medium with tutorial low. Uh, this would indicate that maybe middle intensity uh, might not be a good idea for the design of electro electrotactons. And uh, then you use statistical tests uh, to see if the size of the electrode had any significant effect and it showed there was no significant effect on the recognition rate. Uh, this means that um, you can use electrotactons in application that requires them to be small without worrying about their uh, performance. And the same thing for body locations, it did not have any significant effect on recognition rate. Uh, this means that you can use uh, the uh, electrotactons in different body locations without uh, worrying about their performance. So the findings indicate that removing the middle level of intensity, uh, the, recognition, the, the, the recognition rate would be improved. Uh, and also that electrotactons are suitable for different applications in terms of like size or even location. So going back to the research questions, the research question one, uh, uh, these experiments presented uh, explore the design space of electrotactile feedback for creating uh, effective cues that uh, provide insights into the importance of different uh, uh, electrotactile parameters. And the findings showed that all parameters had a significant, uh, uh, that influence uh, subjective perception, 
which can be used to evoke a wide range of different sensations from calm and urgent and not annoying uh, to uh, highly urgent, alarming and annoying. Uh, this gives it a great potential for making meaningful messages or emojis uh, with an emotional dimension, especially for handheld devices. And for question two, like having key levels of sensations from experiment one, two and four, and distinguishable levels from experiment five, make, uh, five, make it make electrotactile feedback or make the parameters a uh, 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 strong contributors to the electrotactile uh, design space. Uh, for the last question, uh, reducing the dimension will automatically, I think, boost the performance of 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 the uh, recognition rate because it reduces the cognitive load on the uh, participants, and also through that I learned that uh, I learned uh, what certain levels of certain parameters hinders the performance of electrotectons. So I have to put this in mind later on. And uh, in my future work, I will explore the body location as a parameter in terms of like the pattern of activation. For example, using the different three uh, locations to encode uh, time until uh, uh, an experiment, uh, an appointment, for example. In addition, um, also investigate rhythm as a potential parameter, and rhythm is basically a combination of different intensities and durations. And uh, at the end, I would like to uh, thank my supervisor, uh, Professor Stephen Brewster, for guiding me through my throughout my PhD. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and uh, I'm happy to take any questions if you have any. Um, are there any questions? Um, I was just, um, I, I think I missed that bit or I couldn't hear you properly. Um, and that was um, the future work for exploring body positions. Uh, do you mind expanding on that just a little? Because I, it's quite interesting. So, yeah. So what I did uh, in my last experiment, I uh, kind of explored body location in terms of do they affect the recognition rate of the electrotectons? And it turns out that there are there, there is no significant effect. That's the part of experiment uh, six, which is the last one. But in the future, the body location, I would employ it as a parameter to encode a, a piece of information. Like, for example, the time of an appointment. So let's say the palm would be a meeting in five minutes, the rest would be a meeting in 15 minutes, upper arm at a meeting in like half an hour. Okay, interesting. That's quite interesting. Um, so, oh, okay, and you've given some application for that. Um, so you mentioned about a uh, rhythm um, as a parameter or something that you're going to be looking at. Are, have you got any kind of feelings based on any searches um, or previous research on what rhythm you expect? What's so, more recognizable? So yeah, uh, in my research, I kind of, so electrotactons is based on the equivalent, the equivalent in, in verbal tactile called tactons done by a previous student of uh, my uh, supervisor, Stephen Brewster. So she used um, vibration to do rhythms and if you would know that the parameters of vibration is different than electrotactile. So I will try to kind of construct like a new way of doing rhythm within electrotactile feedback. And basically when uh, with a lot of like testing, so as I mentioned, rhythm in electrotactile is a different intensities of different uh, uh, durations. So let's say um, like if you have like a timeline, so the first like 0 0.2 seconds, it's going to be like high intensity and then mid and then high again. So if I, so these chunks, if I put them next to each other, you can do like a specific rhythm. And uh, a year ago, I did a, a fun project where I did a birthday, a birthday rhythm using electrotecton feedback. And I presented it to my uh, supervisor in his birthday. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> the thing is, it took me probably a full day of doing it because I did it manually. And then when I presented, because I saved it in a separate file on my 
PC, which is not my personal PC, and I kind of lost it. So I, I was like, I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> oh, no, but that's brilliant. That's so brilliant. Um, well, I'd love to kind of follow your research on the different rhythms, because I mean, imagine, um, like you say, you know, rhythms can change in intensity um, in, in the experience or perception of pain or, you know, however. Um, yeah, so that's going to be interesting. Um, are you, um, how far are you from actually doing that? Because that's quite interesting. Are you starting it already? So I have it ready right now, but I'm, I'm putting like a, a halt on my experiments until I finish submitting my thesis, which is going to be in the next month. So once I finish uh, submit my thesis, I would do my last experiment. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't say last experiment, but I want to do that because I want to see how, how people would perceive uh, rhythm in, in electrotactile feedback. It, it's going to be quite like interesting. Very interesting. And, and definitely a full paper for Kai. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are there any other questions? No. no okay. All right. Uh, wonderful. Uh, thank you. So oh, Patty. Sure, Patty. Go ahead. Right. So, I mean, I've I've spoken to Yusuf about this research quite a bit and did a bit of work myself. So um, one of the things I'm personally interested in, so I'm going to um, throw that at you, is like emotional associations with this. Mm -hmm. So you, you already looked at like uh, valence and arousal, but do you think that this is also something where you could kind of um, invoke other kind of like more pronounced emotions, specific emotions with this kind of feedback? But like for thermal feedback, for example, it's very often that a specific temperature in a specific context could kind of evoke emotions. Do you think electrotactile feedback could do that? I think it, it can. Um, for example, also, it's uh, quite tricky with electrotactile feedback because it's kind of not regulated. No, I wouldn't say regulated even, like with verbotactile hardwares, they, the hardware of verbotactile you can get it from different vendors and they would give you the same thing where with electrotactile, the electrical stimulators had their own settings. For example, maybe Paddy, you know, uh, we have two machines in our lab. The machine I, I did my research on only allows me to manipulate three parameters. It doesn't give me that much of leg room to expand on th different things where a different machine that we brought, which induces the sensation of itchiness, which was weird. So I think, yeah, I think the more parameters you have uh, freedom to manipulate, the more emotions that you can evoke. I think, it, I think it would be easy to invoke, not easy, oh my gosh, that's not a good word to pick, but um, a bit, um, people associate kind of electrical stimulation with more negative emotion um, than, um, so possibly, you know, eliciting, positive emotions might be where it could be very tricky. Um, but but it's the, you know, okay, yeah, okay. Um, I feel, you know, there's some electrical stimulation. Okay, it's ne I feel negative about it, but it's differentiating between the negative emotions. Um, that's going to be interesting as well. But it's the eliciting positive emotions that's going to be the, the, the issue. But it will be fascinating. Again, Kai paper. <laughs> Hopefully. Maybe. But, uh, yeah, go maybe, ahead, Patty. Maybe even like thinking about multimodal, like having different haptic feedbacks mm -hmm. work together, vibration, electrotactile, thermal. So that is something I would be interested in to see. How <laughs> also if they kind of um, influence each other because we have no idea. I mean, we are we would be um, targeting different kind of um, sensors in the skin. So maybe they wouldn't, but maybe it would make a huge difference. So we don't know. That would be something mm -hmm. definitely to look at. So to, yeah. to, add, to, to add on that, uh, during my last experiment, because I did the upper arm, some participants said that this area felt more calming. So I was like, maybe that's a potential to kind of explore this area in terms of like different sensations. Mm. Yeah, that's very interesting. So it sounds like your PhD is not done <laughs> no. at all. <laughs> In paper, it's done, but um, you know, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Are there any other questions? No. Well, I thank you so much. This was such an interesting talk and it seems like it's never, it's never going to end because it's so new. It's so, there's so many things to explore with it. You've basically developed a protocol, which is, um, which is very, very interesting and really hard to do. So amazing. Well done.
Uh, thank you, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me for this talk. Of course. Of course. Um, well, thank you. Have a lovely uh, day and I'll speak to you soon. Bye, guys. Okay, bye-bye.